A few months ago, I posted a compilation of ski clips from a backcountry ski trip in California. During that trip, we also spent a day at Sugar Bowl, and today, we're going to be ranking their lift system from worst to best. Without further ado, we're twin skiing lifts and rides, and this is every lift at Sugar Bowl ranked. 11. Village Gondola. Let's start with the lift that's just straight up uncomfortable. It's a bit of a Franken lift with C Tech and Von Roll parts, which might sound cool at first, but the end result is just a rough ride with jarring moments going over the towers as well as entering and exiting the terminals. So, almost the whole ride, I brace myself because. It's a freaking earthquake! Ah! Easily the worst lift I've ever ridden, end of story. Not to mention it's a required lift if you park at the highway, so you're basically condemned to a rough ride down and back. 10. Village Toe. Not really useful since the gondola is right next door, there's no point in riding it unless you're staying in the village. 9. White Pine. This is one of two beginner areas at Sugar Bowl. I sometimes like to think of it as the Sugar Bowl Playground. It's secluded from the rest of the mountain, so there's really no reason to go on this, unless you want the credit, or if you want to check out those mini terrain parks. Better name for it? White Pine Walrus! 8. Knob Hill. Here's another beginner lift. Although this one is more useful than White Pine because you can actually transfer yourself from the base area over to Christmas Tree and Mount Lincoln Expresses. I sometimes refer to this lift as Noob Hill, as it's built for noobs. Other than that, it's just a handy dandy transfer lift. 7. Jerome Hill Express. Here's yet another egress lift. This one gets you back to the main village. There are some fun runs such as Sidewinder, Emigrant Gap, Trailblazer, and Central Pacific. It does get flat near the bottom, and you may want to plan ahead so you don't get stuck waiting in a long line if you want to head back to the village. 6. Summit. Quite possibly the gnarliest section of Sugar Bowl. It wasn't running during our visit, but it seems similar to 9090 at Park City. You gotta know what you're doing, or else you'll slip and fall. 5. Mount Judah Express. Honestly, if it weren't for the insanely slow speed, Mount Judah Express would actually be a great lift to lap. No kidding, this thing was only running at 725 feet per minute, which was absolutely ridiculous. Besides that, there are definitely some fun runs as well as a few terrain parks. 4. Crow's Peak. Here's another section of the mountain that was closed during our trip, although it's slightly better than some because the trails are nowhere near as gnarly. It's got some sick trails like Crow's Traverse to Rob's Run or Strawberry Fields if you want some glade skiing. Experts would take on the Crow's Face and Crow's Nest Glades if they want the challenge. 3. Disney Express. Uh, okay, looks like we got another out of base lift that is actually really good, so let's talk about that for just a second. I'm sorry! In all seriousness though, you can actually find some really good intermediate and advanced runs off this lift. East face usually is icy in the morning, but by the afternoon it gets so much better. And also, you don't have to ride Knob Hill if you want to get to the Mount Lincoln and Christmas Tree Expresses, and a challenge. 2. Mount Lincoln Express. This gets you to Sugar Bowl's highest point, and the trails are a lot more challenging than Disney and Mount Judah. The lift passes over a couple of cliffs near the end, and the views are astounding at the top. The only problem I have with this lift is the speed, because it was running way too slow for a detachable. Even slower than Mount Judah. Regardless, this is still one of the best lifts at Sugar Bowl, and it serves some pretty epic terrain. 1. Christmas Tree Express. You don't have to be a mile master to provide a superb lapping experience. The lift usually gets huge crowds, but by the afternoon, the crowds usually die down and it gets quieter. The lift is short and sweet, and the terrain is steep and fun. The lift runs at a decent pace, and I could easily spend a day lapping this area without touching any of the other lifts, besides Knob Hill or Disney. How's that new mic voice? Much easier to hear, huh? But anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and let me know in the comments if you agree with this list. I'll be back eventually with rankings from Winter Park and the Conwood Canyons areas, but until then, stay tuned.